to invite you to rise. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows and with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. Let us sing. of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to begin this afternoon by sharing um, some pictures that the family has gathered of Bob's life, and so we begin by remembering him in this way.
you for sharing those beautiful images with us. What a good celebration of his life. This time I'm going to read the words the family has prepared um, to share some of their memories of Bob with you. These are their words, not mine. Bob was born April 26, 1950 in Saskatoon to Benny and Hazel Burquist. Bob was predeceased by his oldest brother, Reed, and survived by his youngest brother, Gary. They lived in Saskatoon until 1957, when they then moved to McCrory and ran the McCrory Cafe during the days of Gardner Dam being built. They ran a very busy restaurant where they met many great friends. Then they moved back to Saskatoon in 1959. While in Saskatoon, Bob and his brother Gary made numerous trips, walking to the theater on Broadway to catch the latest film. And during the summer months, the boys would spend their time at the Mayfair pool. The time away from home was often spent as a family visiting relatives. They were often found at Bob's Uncle Forrest and Aunt Annie Dunning's farm south of McCrory. Bob spoke often about all the memories that were made at Forrest and Annie's farm, from collecting arrowheads to making trips to Titchfield to buy candy at the store. Other memories were also spoken about their times visiting with his uncle Robert and aunt Jean Duncan in Broderick, memories of road trips to Edmonton and help Bob helping uncle Robert farm north of Broderick were often reminisced. In 1960, Reed, Bob, and Gary lived in Broderick for one year with Uncle Robert and Aunt Jean while their mom was ill in Saskatoon. 1965, Benny, Hazel, Bob, and Gary moved out to Keniston, where Bob finished his schooling. While in Keniston, they lived above the restaurant where the boys spent their time helping work in the restaurant. During the summer of 67, Hazel, Bob, and Gary made a trip to Thunder Bay by train to visit family which was spoken often about. After high school, Bob moved back to Broderick, 1967, to live with his uncle Robert and Aunt Jean while he worked at the Rudy Fertile Co-op Association in Outlook. This is the time where he met Erla at the grade 11 high school dance. Bob and Erla were married on August 5, 1972 at Green Valley Lutheran Church. They lived in Saskatoon together until 1974 when Bob and Erla moved to Fort McLeod, Alberta. Bob and Erla loved camping and fishing in the mountains while living in Fort McLeod. Jason was born in 1977 in Lethbridge, and then in 1978, Bob, Erla, and Jason moved to Outlook. Brad was born in Outlook in 1980. In the spring of 1981, they moved to Broderick. Prior to moving the house trailer onto the lot in Broderick, there was a barren family reunion held on the lot where fond memories were made. During their years in Broderick, many family reunions were held at the hall for the Farker and Dunbar families, as well as many memories being made with the Barr family. Through Bob's years, he owned B&J Carpet Cleaning, Village Disc Shop, I'm told that's floppy disks in case you're wondering, and became part owner with Joyce Gesner with, in Snackers, where many memories were made at Coffee Row with the best sandwiches. Brad and Jason have many fond memories of Snackers with their dad. Through Bob's years of working, he also enjoyed working for many local farmers in Outlook and Broderick area. One thing Bob was very proud of, as he was extremely passionate about technology, receiving his diploma in computer maintenance technology in 1998, and in 2000, getting his diploma as network technician at CDI College of Business and Technology. Bob shared his passion for traveling and road trips with Erla, Jason, and Brad. There were two things Bob always felt his family needed to do. One was travel by train, and the other was to touch the ocean. Memories were made as they traveled by train to Victoria and on a separate trip by train to Terrace, BC, with a continued road trip to Alaska from Terrace. The road trips were never ending. When Jason was 16 and Brad was 13, they made a road trip to Tofino, where they 
all got the opportunity to touch the ocean. Bob reminisced about these road trips and how Jason and Brad could really get the car rocking while he was driving. Those boys were always plotting as to when the best time to rock the car would be while in the back seat. Family memories were made by putting the miles on the motorhome. From Erla coming home after work on Friday to head to a campground for the weekend, to a weekend trip to the old stock car racetrack in Saskatoon. Bob really enjoyed watching NASCAR on TV and continued that passion through attending the races in Saskatoon with family. Bob was known for enjoying his TV shows and movies with his nightly bowl of popcorn by his side. When the boys and grandkids think of Bob, popcorn is the first thing that comes to mind. Bob will always be remembered for his particular nature. From how the grass was cut, how the vehicles were parked in the driveway, and how a project should be built. There was the wrong way or Bob's way. No one could ever wrap a present like Bob could. No matter the shape or size, the presents were done perfectly. This past summer was one of Bob's greatest summers since COVID. He had cousins and nieces visit that he hadn't seen in years. And on August 12th, a 50th wedding anniversary party was held in Bob and Erla's backyard, where family and friends gathered. And as his nieces and nephews were ready to leave at midnight, Bob asked why everyone was leaving so early. He was eager to keep the night going. Bob had four grandchildren, Jason and Carrie's kids, Ava, Paige, and Connor, and Brad and Brandy's son, Rhett. Bob did all he could to get to every sporting event the grandkids were part of. He was sure to make the road trip to Lloyd Minster to catch as many of Rhett's hockey games as possible, even if it meant he had to take the bus out to Lloyd Minster. He wouldn't miss a dance recital of Ava's, a volleyball game of Paige's, or a baseball and hockey games of Connor. So now some fond memories from the grandkids. Ava's recent memory of Grandpa is about how they were going to fix her car together. However, she found out that her only job would be to hold the light while Grandpa worked. One of Paige's memories of Grandpa is helping her with school projects, also known as creating and completing them for her. Rhett's best memories were road trips with Grandpa as they traveled to Lac La Biche, Alberta for his hockey games and their trip to Toronto and Niagara Falls in 2018. Connor remembers doing lots of yard projects with Grandpa. He was Grandpa's right-hand man while working outside. Over the last few days, as we reminisce with Gary, Grant, Janet, nieces and nephews, cousins and friends, memories have been shared that have made us all laugh and most of all made us all smile. Losing you will be one of the most difficult hardships we will face. However, all the reminiscing has made us realize just how lucky we were to have you in our lives. Without your encouragement, advice, and love, we wouldn't be the people we are today. Thank you for everything, Bob. We love you. In closing, we hope you'll be at peace watching down at us, and we will be sure that your lawn will continue to be cut your way and that the vehicles will always be parked correctly in the driveway. Thank you to the family for sharing these beautiful memories with us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, source of all mercy and giver of comfort, Deal graciously, we pray, with those who mourn, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, your days are without end and your mercies cannot be counted. Make us aware of the shortness and uncertainty of human life. 
and let your Holy Spirit lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days, all the days of our life, so that when we shall have served you in our generation, we may be gathered with, to our ancestors, having the testimony of a good conscience in the communion of your church, in the confidence of a certain faith, in the comfort of a holy hope, in favor with you, our God, and in peace with all humanity, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we'll have the reading of God's word. Forty-six, verses 1 to 7. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. In our gospel reading, John 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I didn't really get to know Bob well, but we certainly saw each other a number of times. And uh, I was able, in preparing, get to talk with the boys uh, and with Erla about Bob. One of the things that struck me is that uh, they were storm chasers before storm chasing was cool when it was still thought of as stupid, I think, but uh, they would chase after that. I, I chose one of the readings from the Psalms about this chaos that comes, where it's described as uh, the earth shaking and all chaos breaking loose. And it's a Psalm that reminds us that even so, we have a refuge with God. We're in a tumultuous time right now we didn't chase after it, but it found us anyway. And in God, there's peace. And the peace that he offers is a promise that Christ, who's gone before us to pave the way for us, has made us a promise that when we put our trust and faith in him, that he's preparing a place for us to be with him forever, untouched by the pains of this world, untouched by sin, by grief, sorrow. A place of peace, a refuge. I also noticed in talking with the family that, um, is it fair to say Bob was a person of detail? 
I think uh, when we find out that I probably broke his parking violations when I first came to visit the family. Um, yeah, sorry about that, but I didn't know um, that the lawn had to be cut in a specific way and uh, just got me thinking about the detail of such a person. Typically people who are into technology are detail people. It's not universal truth, but it's frequently common, I guess. And thinking about the detail of such a person, person as Bob and uh, the effort he would have had to put into his construction projects. He probably built everything in his brain before he uh, went to the shop to get any tools out. Um, Pre-planning. Pre-planning. And I, uh, I like that. I like that about him. But I'll have to say this, as detailed as he was, and I have to say from your stories, it sounds exceptionally uh, detail-oriented. He's got nothing on God. I don't know if uh, you ever counted Erla, but do you remember how many times he tossed in the night? Could you count them? No. Psalm 56, 8 says, You have kept count of my tossings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? God's a detail person. He also says, Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? And not one of them is forgotten before God. Why, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not. You are of more value than many sparrows. Our God is a God of detail, but not just silly detail. His detail, his memory, his attention is focused on us. He loves us so much that he would know how many hairs are on our heads. As we get older, you know, the counting gets easier, but you can't just use yesterday's total, you know, you got to recount again. Yes, God knows every hair on our head. Such detail shows passion. I don't think it would be a stretch to say that Bob was passionate about many things because it showed in the level of attention he gave them. I, uh, I kept our kids from hockey. I was not willing to skip church when that was where I worked. Uh, every Sunday to make the trips um, and I just would not be able to afford to be there for all these games that are away. We could have found other teammates for them to go with and whatnot, but that was not the life we wanted. And then I look at Bob and going to all those games, even taking bus trips to make them, that's passion. Passion for grandkids, passion for kids, I dare say. Passion for his loved ones. Such is the nature of our own God. Passion for us. Not just knowing the details of our lives, but invested. Making the long trip from heaven to be with us to spend years with us in Jesus Christ. To pay the terrible price, not of a bus trip, but of his very life for us. So great is the passion of our God. Our God loves us so much that he not only came and paid paved the way for us to be with him forever, but also 
made the promises available to us to bring us peace while we yet linger here. Madly passionate about us. And it's that passion for us that brings us hope today. It's okay to grieve. It's normal. It's good. It's just a sign that love is there. And the hope we have in Jesus is that the love never really ends. In fact, it only gets better. It only improves. And the love that God has for us sustains us at such a time. We gather here, you're all here, in this building because of these hopes, because of these promises God has made, because of the detail that God has invested into us. His passion, his attention, and it bears this fruit that when we come to a time like this, when we say goodbye to a loved one, that we can do it, yes, through our tears, but tears that are tempered with hope. Tears that are blessed because of that hope. It's hard to lose a loved one, no doubt, but they're not really lost if we follow our Savior who's prepared a place for us all to be together. May God sustain us in that hope and in that passionate love of our God so that we face our days with hope, even among the tears. Amen. Family may remain seated, but the rest of you, I'll encourage you if you're able to rise and we'll worship God in song.
has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Grant to us who are still on our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Hear us, Lord. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Hear us, Lord. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Hear us, Lord. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. Yes. Lord. Grant us grace to entrust Bob to your never failing love, which sustained him in this life. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and remember him according to the favor you bear for your people. Hear us, Lord. God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present, nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. We sing to Again, family can be, remain seated and we'll ask the rest of you to rise as we worship God in song.
family would uh, like to have you stay uh, for a time of visiting and there will be a, a light luncheon in our fellowship hall uh, and in preparation for that I'd like to lead us in grace let us pray Almighty God we do give you thanks for the gift of your saints we give you thanks for the gift of fellowship and the encouragement that it can bring. Be with us now as we share this time together. Would you bless this food to our bodies and our time to our mutual consolation. In the gift of your Holy Spirit, we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Let us go forth in peace in the name of Christ.